Like Obama, Xi Jinping will have to focus on domestic policy first. But to both Beijing and Washington, the China-US relationship is all important. Who will be making the first move and what will that move be? Well, it's interesting because we, we've had a U.S. election and we've re-elected the president. We're at the Chinese Party Congress right now, which is going to move Xi Jinping in as the, as the secretary general of the Communist Party. But it's not until March uh, that he will finally become the president of China during the NPC session. And so in some ways we have until after the re-inauguration of Obama and after uh, Xi Jinping officially takes power before we're going to see this, this movement, this potential for the two leaders to come together again. Of course, there's an issue coming up in the next few days when Secretary Hillary Clinton and Defence Chief Leon Panetta will be in Perth meeting their Australian counterparts, presumably to bed down and even extend defence cooperation, a move that certainly won't please China. The, the administration, I think, is going to be accelerating uh, its attempts to, uh, as it first called it, pivot uh, to Asia. We're going to see a lot more activity in trying to increase economic cooperation within the region, as well as this further expansion of U.S. military cooperation in the region. A and in this sense, certainly the Chinese are going to be concerned. The U.S. continues to try to shape this as something that's not against China. Uh, but the Chinese are going to read it that way uh, no matter what. At the same time, the U.S. and the Chinese are both in the same economic system. They both have a lot of uh, interactivity and dependability upon one another in regards to uh, their economies, in regards to trade. And so it's not the same as managing, say, the Soviet Union uh, when the U.S. is working with the Chinese and as the Chinese are trying to manage their relationship with the United States. President Obama has also announced that he's going to the ASEAN summit in Cambodia later this month, making a historic visit to Myanmar first. ASEAN is really, uh, in many ways, a centerpiece of the administration's um, uh, return or expansion of activity in Asia. Because ASEAN is an existing grouping, in some sense it's supposed to be seen as a neutral grouping. It's neither a strong U.S. ally nor a strong Chinese ally and therefore it, it can serve in some sense as a, as a buffer. Uh, it also sits between the, the sphere of influence of these two uh, larger regional powers. So as we see Obama go down and work with ASEAN, as we, he talks with the Southeast Asian states, um, this is an economic issue, this is increasing um, uh, trade uh, elements, it's increasing political relations, uh, building it stronger with, say, Cambodia. Thailand is a traditional ally. Myanmar is one of the more interesting things as Obama goes there. That's supposed to highlight uh, the effectiveness of the administration's foreign policy. In other words, it drew a, a uh, military government into the realm of, of democracy. Uh, so. Those are places that for Obama are really important to highlight. For the Chinese, however, it is seen very much as part of a containment right around China. And Myanmar for them is probably the most sensitive of all of these because that's a place where they really had a lot of influence, where they were looking at it as a major part of their uh, energy security. And now they see it as a place where the United States is in some sense squeezing them off. Roger Baker, thanks for being with us today. And I'm sure we'll come back to this significant visit in more detail. That's Agenda for this week. See you next time.